The Ada AI Pair Programmer has three different modes that you can operate it in. That's Ask, Code and Architect mode. What we'll do in this video is check them out. I'm Happy Dave, let's get into it. Let's go learn about the chat mode in Ada. So what we can do is come up to the search bar and just put in chat modes and it'll take us to this page where there are four different types, Code, Architect, Ask and Help. So here we've got the chat modes and the code will make changes to your code to satisfy the requests. We've got the architect mode, which will propose a solution for you. Then ask if you want to turn that proposal into an edit. Then we've got the ask and the ask will allow us to have questions about the code, but it's not going to make any changes to the code. And finally, we've got help, which will allow us to deal with configuration and other sorts of issues with ADA. Now, if you don't provide a chat mode, you'll end up with code by default. You can also access these modes from within the ADA terminal. And so the examples given in the documentation is slash ask, what is this repo about? And it'll tell you the information of the repo. Then we've got slash help, how do I use Olama? And it gives instructions on how to do that. Then we've got the slash code, add some functionality. And then the last one, the slash architect, it's just going with the idea of can you make it simpler? So it should come up with a plan of action before writing the code. So let's go over what we want to build today. Now, at the beginning of this video, you would have seen some images behind me on a green screen. And this is what this application is going to be designed to do. So we should be able to take the transcript. They're the words that I said during the intro. From that, we should be able to break it down into storyboarding concepts. So when I think about it, we've talked about Ada and we've got these chat modes like ask, and architect and code. So can the images have that sort of concept going on? Now, one of the things that we wanna do is make sure that we've got design consistency. So we wanna have the ability to input information about the designs. And then lastly, we wanna create a bunch of prompts, but we probably wanna create at least two, maybe three prompts per storyboard concept so that we've got some things to play around. Ultimately, we want to bring it together and generate those images. I'm starting off with a brand new repo and what I'm going to do is come into Canvas and just copy this information and we'll head down to Ada. Now by default, Ada is in code mode, but we can actually type in code if we want to be explicit. And then what we'll do is we'll just paste all that information and let's just see what happens. Now I haven't told it programming languages. I don't know whether it's going to do JavaScript or Python. It's just creating code at the moment. So it looks like it's written it in Python. And if we look at the initial goals that we got of accepting a transcript and breaking it down into concepts, it looks like from reading the actual comments that this is what this part of the application is going to do. So here we're extracting ideas from a transcript. After that, we're going to convert them into storyboard concepts in this bit of code. Now with the design style definition going on here, and we've got minimalist watercolor, we can see from the prompt creation section that it's come up with a prompt idea of create a minimalist watercolor, an image of a ship battling waves under the dark. And then the next step is the image count. Now, if we go over to the code that's down below, we can see that it generates it takes in the design style which is the watercolor minimalist and then it takes in the number of concepts we want now at the moment it says default one i probably want default two but it looks like we're making a fair bit of progress just using the code command now the last part of this document was that it would just output the prompts we've got it breaking the transcript into visual ideas we've got it aligning with the design style and then we're just out putting the prompts so that we could use it in something like Leonardo AI or Mid Journey. And if we look at the code, it looks like it's predefined the variables for us. So there's no input with this. It'll just run and it's just generating the prompts in a loop right here. Now let's see if we can get this running. Now it looks like it's got a bunch of dependencies in poetry. It's doing a poetry install, poetry run of the script. There's no parameters because they're all being hard coded as variables. And then it's got a list of things that it's working through. It's asking us if we want to create a file. It's press yes to that and it's generated each of the classes as we go through. Here's the main script being generated. 
we've got in the near we've got a pyproject.toml. I don't even know if I've got poetry on this computer. We'll just press yes and we'll see what happens. Looks like I do. So we've got installation of Python modules going on at the moment. And it's just asking if all that logging that we've just seen on screen wants to be in the chat, which can be useful for it understanding the context of the environment it's in. So we'll press yes to that and we'll let's just see if this actually runs. Now let's just manually create some images. So we'll go into Leonardo AI. Now, if you want to understand why I don't use Mid Journey, check out the link in the description. But for today, what we'll do is we'll go into create image with Leonardo AI, and I'm going to leave it on four small, and we'll go with widescreen because when I'm doing images for the green screen, I want it to take up the whole of the video. And what we'll do is we'll just paste it in. Now, ideally, we don't need this number. It doesn't really make any sense, but this is just a proof of concept. So while that's generated, let's just come over and select the second one and we'll paste it in and we'll do the third one and we'll paste it in and I've done the others and we're just coming down to the sixth one and we can have a look at what it's generating. If you were paying attention to the video you would have noticed that I didn't actually read the output and so I didn't see that there was a bug because when we look at one and two it's the same prompt Three and four is the same prompt and five and six is the same prompt. So this is something we can fix. But in the meantime, let's look at what Leonardo is doing for us. So like I said, there's two prompts that I pasted that were the same in each case, but we've basically got a minimalist watercolor image, visual representation. The sun rises over a misty mountain range. So we've got two beautiful versions that we can do. Now notice as we go through this, that the style is very consistent. So the next one, is a lone wolf house at the moon. So we've got two different variants. And lastly, we've got ancient forest whispers, secrets to the wind. And we've got these coming through here. Now, because we've got this bug where it's doing the same information twice, it'd be good to let Ada know about it. Now, notice that the first statement here is, do you want to add the output to the chat window? So what we'll do is we'll press yes to. Now let's have a look at this duplication of the prompts. Now we could write, a prompt that just says, can you fix this particular problem? And that would be a pretty standard way of working with Ada. But we do have access to the ask command. So what we'll do is we'll type in ask and we'll just paste in a little prompt as such. Why are prompts repeating twice? We have six prompts, but only three unique. And we'll just press enter on that and see what it comes up with. Now it's come up with an answer that makes total sense to it but it's not going to be right for our situation. So it says this is happening because the example usage main.py has variations set to two. And we can see the number, this causes each prompt to generate twice. This comment has been added by the ask command. It then points out this particular loop and says creates multiple variations. And then finally comes up with a statement which isn't correct for how the word variations actually means. It says if you want only unique prompts you should set variations to one. So what it's assuming is that the variations is a count of the prompts rather than thinking that this is multiple variations of the same concept. But this is really powerful because not only did we get to see the code and see the comments of how it was thinking, we were also able to see where it was not thinking in a correct way by the words it said, and we can easily alter that. So I'm going to let it know that its understanding of the word variations is not a count, but that it's the same visual concept repeated multiple times with different. Now I've written a prompt and I'm using the explicit slash code mode at the moment I said your understanding of the word variation is incorrect you're using it as if it is a count we should see two different prompts for the same image concept and style if the variation is set to two so please update the code now firstly it's changed the name of the argument from variations to variations per concept it's given us a good description of what it will do and then it's come up with a technique for having multiple variations which was not the way I intended but it's actually, given the fact that I didn't give it explicit instructions around this, 
quite a practical approach. So what it's done is it's just come up with a bunch of templates and we've got five of them there. So it goes and grabs a bunch of templates based on the count. You can put in a number and it'll return that number of templates. But I can see potentially two different issues here. It's probably not considering that it's zero indexed rather than one index. And the other is it's not using a modulus. So if it overflows, we'll probably get an exception. So this is probably going to work for us but it's still not the intended outcome that we want. Now one of the problems we've got with our code is that there's no real variation between these prompts so image or illustration are the same. So what I've done is just modified one of them, the third one, to also say in the golden age of comics which is a style from the 60s and I've just increased it to three. I've also come over to DALI 3 this time for a little bit of variation. Here we've got our watercolour image. Now if we go down a little bit further and we look at an illustration, that it is different, but it's not a lot of different. So then we can move down and have a look at the golden age of comics, which is a specific style from the 60s, and this is looking quite a bit. Let's go and test the wolf. We've got an image, we've got an illustration, and lastly we've got the golden age of comics. So let's move on to the architect chat mode, and what we'll do is we'll try and refactor the application so it's now a web application, and it uses generative AI to generate the prompts for us. So we'll come back to Ada and we'll start typing architect and for the prompt what we'll do is we'll put in a prompt that says can we refactor it as a web interface where the inputs are coming through say text boxes or something like that and can we make sure it's using generative AI to generate the prompts for us and we'll press enter and see what it does. So let's have a look through the changes. So the first thing we can see is there's a bunch of dependencies and we have fast API, which I assume will have a web server through that. And we've got open AI, which we'll use for the large language model calling. Now we've got an AI prompt generator, which is going to use open AI to do the work there. We're still taking in the con design style and variations per concept count. Now it's just looping through each of the concepts and creating a system prompt going on here, as well as a user prompt with the number of variations going on. We can see the API call going on to OpenAI, and there's some sort of cleanup code that may or may not work depending on how the information is returned. I assume generally this will work, but I might personally want to create a more robust solution in the future. After that, it's created a web server. It seems to have two endpoints. I'm assuming this is the endpoint where we'll enter in our parameters and then we've got an additional endpoint going in as a post where we'll generate the actual. And after that, we've got the web form where we'll be able to input our parameters. So if we scroll to the bottom, it's creating an environment file, installing dependencies, asking to add the open AI key, which we'll have to do and then it'll start so let's try and run this and see what happens so at first glance the architect mode doesn't look a lot different to the code mode in that we've got code being generated that it's asking the question would you like to apply it it's also got a section down the bottom telling us what it plans to refactor and what the expected outcome will be at the end but where it does differ is what happens behind the scenes. You see with the architect mode we're making two requests. The first one could use a model like O1 and with that we're building up a requirements document and a list of steps to take care of. We can use chain of thought. Then when it makes the second request to actually generate the code we could use something like or another model that's designed specifically for coding. Now I asked Ada to set everything up. It's then started running through the code, installing the dependencies. It's kicked off a web server and we can see that the web server is up and running. So what we're going to need now is a transcript and we'll put in a design style as well. Now I'm going to put in golden age of comics sci-fi. We'll leave it at two and let's go work this out. Now we'll come over to the intro from this particular video and you can see it here where I'm talking through different words and I've run it through Whisper AI and here we've got the information I said. The Ada AI Pair Programmer has three different modes that you can operate it in. We've got 
ask code and architect mode. So hopefully when we run this through our prompt, we're gonna start seeing some image prompts based on these concepts. Now here we have our AI prompt generator application. We'll just paste in the information we had from the transcript and we'll click on the generate prompts. It's no animation, so I'm not sure if it's doing anything at the moment. And it took about 10 seconds and then this just popped up. So we got the Ada AI pair programmer trio of powers got the adventures of Code Crusader in Ask model. So I think what we can do now is maybe just select one of these. And with this copied, we'll take it over to Leonardo. I think the problem, we can see that we're only seeing prompt 1111, so there's an issue there. We're also not seeing any concept of the golden age of comics, sci-fi being woven into this, but we can just come up here and at least test out what we could get with one of these images. So we'll go and select the second one. And while the first one is being generated, we'll generate that one as well. So these are the images we've generated. We've got the uh, trio of powers. We've got the ask mode, the space explorers, unveiling galactic mysteries. And then we've got Appy Dave, Galaxy, Guardian, and a showdown. A quick recap, we've used the ask mode, the code, and the architect mode. We didn't use the help mode in this video. The application that we've built is nearly complete, but there's still some problems with it. So the images that you're seeing at the moment are coming from the agent workflow builder which is software that I've developed for myself where I had the design styles the intro and the outro graphics automatically being generated anyway I'm happy Dave please like and subscribe I'll see you in the next one